purpose of this video is to help students who are design students who are working through Criterion A and focusing on strand two and they want to know how to get top marks. So I'm going to outline a few tips and tricks and, and tell you uh, what you should do so you can make sure you get uh, maximum marks for this section. So first of all, let's look at the um, assessment criteria. So to get top marks, you need to construct a detailed research plan. Now I need to stress that this is a research plan. You're not actually conducting extensive research, it's just a plan. Next part says, which identifies and prioritizes primary and secondary research. Now, if, if you're in middle school, uh, first and foremost, you need to be aware of the difference between primary and secondary research. In simple terms, primary research is uh, some research that you conduct firsthand. So you interview somebody or you experience something um, or you collect a survey, this kind of thing. Uh, secondary research is when you watch a video, read a book, get information off a website, which means somebody else has conducted the research in the first place and they've shared that research. This is secondary research. Now, to be a good researcher, you need a, you need a little bit of both. So in your research plan, be sure that you have some primary, be sure that you have some secondary, and you can even have a combination of both. Next part here is you need to prioritize this. Now, when you're coming up with a research plan, uh, one of the first things you're gonna do is just list a bunch of topics that you need to research. Um, and now some of these research topics might not be very important. So they're the ones that you're gonna say, well, this is a low priority. And I'm only gonna conduct this research if I've got time. There's some other research topics and questions that you might say, this is really important. This is so important. I'm gonna put this as top priority. It's my, it's, it's so important because this research, I need, I need to understand this so I can actually make my product. That's how uh, important it is. Uh, next thing is, it talks about here doing things independently. Now, there's two ways to look at this. First of all, are you creating the research plan independently or are you creating the actual product independent, independently? Either way of looking at it, imagine if you have to create something and you're not gonna get any teacher help you have to create your research plan without any teacher help. So this makes you start to think, okay, what do I actually need to research? What do I need to know? Because I've got no support from anywhere. What are the topics in my research plan that I need to cover so I can build my solution? Okay, a couple of bullet points I've listed here. So here's an easy process to get this, to make this work is first of all, just come up with a bunch of research topics. So you can do some brainstorming. You can do this with a friend or you can do it as an actual class as well. Let's just brainstorm with some post-it notes. What are the topics that we need to know about so we can make our product? Now we're talking about the product, the solution that you've identified. You've identified a product, uh, a, a problem in strand one. Now we're starting to think about what do I need to research so I can actually solve that problem? What am I gonna make to solve that problem, address that problem from strand one? So come on with a bunch of topics, loads and loads of different topics of things that you need to research. Then take those topics and then convert them into research questions. Now one of the easiest ways to, to do this is by looking at the MYP design command terms. So you might have a research topic. I'm now gonna rewrite it so I can use the word identify because that's a command term or summarize or outline. Now these research questions, once you convert them, you try to make yourself sound intelligent, academic. So make research questions that sound very academic and intelligent and you can be on track for top marks. The next thing is, once you've come up with your list of topics and then you've converted them to research questions, you then need to uh, identify whether you're gonna, have, you, this, the type of research is gonna be either primary research or secondary. And then you need to even take it one step further. Actually, where are you gonna find this information? You could actually start listing some videos from YouTube or books that you've got in the school library, or maybe there's some people, maybe you're about going to do some primary research and interview an expert. Name that expert, what's their title? Why are you actually interviewing them? What kind of information are you going to get from them? So you're now thinking about the source. Where are you actually going to get this information from? The next thing here, it says, um, Prioritizing. Now, it's the simplest and easy way to do this. I've, I've already mentioned this earlier, but once you've got your bunch of research topics and questions, just go through them quickly and say high, medium, or low. Low, high, medium. And then you might want to even tack on a little sentence about why. High priority. 
this is a high priority because this is essential to me building my product. This is a low importance because it doesn't really impact my solution or my product. So a little bit of because, so identify what priority it is, high, medium, or low, add the word because and explain why. Why you've actually identified that as the high, medium, or low. Now, once you've done that, you should be on track for top marks. Now, I've got some examples here of research tables. Now, this is a style which is called a Gantt chart. So on the left, you'll have your topics, um, but you can actually organize it in, in priorities, but also in time. You know, you might have over, over the course of two lessons or three days or a week or two weeks, when and where and how are you actually gonna do that research? So you can present it visually like a table or a Gantt chart. Another way you can do it, here's a five minute research plan. So this is a visual representative, representation of how you're gonna conduct some research. Here's another very simple one, and this is the kind of thing that I outlined when I was talking before. What are your research topics? List them. Then rewrite them to make them research questions. Tell me where you're gonna actually get this information from, the sources, and the more detail you can provide here, the better. Then identify whether it's primary or secondary, and then the last one, prioritize high, low, or medium, and why. So that's a research table. Now, just to conclude, I wanna talk about the assessment criteria. So for you to get top marks, you need to uh, conduct, a, it needs to be a detailed plan. So if you just can make a research plan, you're going to get a score between three and six, but a detailed research plan gets you a score of seven to eight. Some other key words is with guidance, with some guidance. So if the teacher has had to help you, or a parent has had to help you, you can only get a score of three to six over you. But if you create this research plan independently, you can get a score of seven or eight. Um, and of course, uh, yeah, they're the main differences in the, in the, in the strand to uh, the assessment criteria. So the key words are outlining, constructing, or constructing a detailed research plan. Uh, they're the things that differentiate your score. Now, the last thing I wanna share with you is a list of command terms. Now, if you go online and just type in IB, MYP, design command terms, you'll get a big, long bunch of command terms. And if you use some of these words in your research question, you'll sound like an, a very high, a higher level thinking academic, and the teacher will give you top marks. Good luck with strand two.